um, the things that are happening post breach, you know, after folks have received the notice in the mail and maybe they've called and opted into some type of monitoring to protect themselves, that's not usually the end of it anymore. We're seeing a lot of um, legal cases come up that are causing a lot of concern and folks are starting to ask about that now. And, and so in terms of incident response, what they're asking is, you know, help us foresee all the things. Most companies only have very limited amount of experience dealing with these types of issues where many of us in this room have a much greater level of experience and so that's what they're starting to come to, to us at least and ask us about is you know, help us, you know, we had an event, we changed things so that type of event doesn't happen anymore but what are we not thinking about and what can we do to you know, prevent that, number one, but number two, respond to that in the right way when it does happen. One of the things I think about when I think about incident response plans is it, it kind of, if a well done response plan is, is basically a checklist that takes away as much as possible the decision making that needs to be done and then you don't have people fighting over what are we going to do, it's already determined. We've figured these things out ahead of time when it's not um, emotional, there's no politics coming into play and we can just go through and, and you know go down the checklist and um, I've still told a story before but if you look at aviation and uh, Captain Sully when he you know crash landed his airplane successfully in the, the Hudson River, everybody walked away. That's a pretty amazing story. But you know he attributes that to having a checklist, having a lot of experience, and being able to just react to the incident and have it turn out very well. Versus you know if you start trying to think a lot when you're that close to the ground in that situation, uh, it could have turned out a lot worse. And um, you know a well written incident response plan can really be looked at the same way, much like a fire drill or any other crisis plan you have, but most organizations haven't quite started looking at it that way. If an organization has a response plan that's dialed in, some of the things that are going to be a part of that are we're going to need reports about our training to prove that we've done the training around privacy and security in case we get investigated later on as a part of this breach response. And it's those little things that are a part of the incident response plan that are not, you know, who are we calling, you know, who's in charge here, uh, who gets to call the shots, Th those are all definitely important pieces of it, but having a checklist, again, of, you know, we need to make sure we have these policies and procedures ready to go, and it leads you to other things to do proactively that help you when that incident does occur, if you have that plan in place, and if you don't, then, you know, then there's opportunities for mistakes that can get expensive.